So I have the square root of x multiplied by the cube root of x. Whenever we have radical expressions, it is best to work with them in its rational form. So we're going to convert these radical expressions to uh, rational exponents. So first of all, the base for both of these questions are the same. They're both x. However, for the first radical expression, since the index should have a 2 here, and there is no power, we can translate this into x to the power of 1 half. The second expression is x to the power of 1 third. So the rule is going to be to keep the base the same and add the exponents. However, we cannot simply just add the denominators and add the numerators. We have to make sure to convert to a common denominator. So if we keep the base as x, 1 half and 1 third have a common denominator of 6. And the fraction will convert as 3 over 6 plus 2 over 6, which gives me a final answer, x to the power of 5 over 6. But because my original question was in radical form, we have to convert this rational exponent. So remember, the denominator, or the numerator, refers to the power, and the denominator refers to the index. So my formula is a to the power of m over n is going to be equal to radical a, and your index is going to go inside the square root, your power is going to go on the outside, and we're going to do the same thing over here. My power, everything's going to be to the power of 5, but my index is going to be 6, and we have a radical x. Let's do a few questions that involve some numbers now. Start off very simple. 16 to the power of 3 over 4. Now remember, the 3 is my power. 4 is going to refer to my index. So inside the bracket, I have radical 16, and I'm going to take the fourth root of that. And everything is going to be to the power of 3. To solve this question, we have to work with what's inside the brackets first. So the fourth root of 16 is simply going to be figure it out, we know that 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. So the fourth root of 16 is obviously 2. So we have to take that number 2 and 2 make it to the power of 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, so my final answer is 8. This gets a little bit more complicated when we're working with negative numbers. So if I have negative 27 to the power of 2, over 3. 
negative 27 to the power of 2 thirds. Now, you can't just look at this and say it's not possible to um, take the root of a negative number, because we are going to see that it is pos possible. So my base is going to go underneath the radical, because it's my radicand. The index is the denominator, so I know I'm taking the cubed root. And once I find the cubed root, I'm going to square my final answer. So underneath the radical, I'm looking for three numbers that multiply to 27. And if you think about it very carefully, you'll figure out that negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9, times negative 3 again is equal to negative 27. So the cubed root of negative 27 is negative 3. Now all that's left is to square this number, or apply the power of 2 to this number. So our final answer is going to be positive 9. Let's go back and do one more example that re involves variables. So we're going to do radical x, but we're going to add more exponents to the mix. So we're really focusing on this rule, x to the power of m over n is equal to the index x to the power of m. So if my question the fourth root of x to the power of 7 multiplied by the cubed root of x squared. Now remember, we do not have different bases. Our bases are still the x. So we can, we can really see this if we rewrite the radicals into rational form. So what I have here is x and x. However, my numerators are going to be 7 and 2. And my denominators are going to be the indexes 4 and 3. So we're still multiplying powers. So what I'm going to do is keep the base the same, and I'm going to add my exponents, 7 over 4 plus 2 thirds. However, in order to do this, I have to change to a common denominator. I know that 4 times 3 is 12, so this fraction is going to change into 7 times 3 is 21, so 21 over 12, plus 3 times 4 is 12, so if I do that to my numerator, 2 times 4 is 8. My final answer is x to the power of 29 over 12. However, I wrote this question in radical form, so I still need to convert to radical form again. So underneath the radical, I have my base, x. My index is going to go there, and my power is going to be to the power of 29. Now the final question is an example from the very end of your unit one guide, and it is the question that's 